Welcome to Design Around the World. I'm Karina and today I'm in Amsterdam. Today I'm taking you to roam about the city, check out some of the fabulous designs, check out the local food, and share some activities I did while in Amsterdam. This was a CEO week where I met with my friends, Nikki and Natalie, who also both own companies. First, let's delve deep into the captivating cityscape of Amsterdam and uncover what makes it a global hub for creativity and innovation. Amsterdam, the capital city of the Netherlands, is renowned for its rich cultural heritage, picturesque canals, and iconic architecture. But beyond its postcard perfect beauty lies a dynamic design scene that pulsates with energy and creativity. From sleek modernist buildings to quaint cobblestone streets, Amsterdam offers a captivating blend of old world charm and contemporary flair that sets it apart. One of the most striking aspects of Amsterdam's design scene is its seamless integration of art, architecture, and urban planning. As you explore the city, you'll encounter a myriad of design influences, from the bold lines of modernist structures to the intricate details of historic landmarks. Amsterdam's diverse architectural landscape serves as a canvas for creativity. First, I need to show you the interior design work in the Hotel Nobleman where we stayed. Each room was themed and I stayed in the trip room. They chose dark paint in my room and the other two rooms Natalie and Nikki stayed in. There was a view of a canal and a monstrous four-poster bed. Lots of camel-colored leather offset the dark walls and molding. My room had a large copper bathtub, which I thought was beautiful, but did not use. Gold detailing was everywhere from the knobs to the sink. There was a little leather-bound folder with information on the two men that inspired the room's interiors. Oh yeah, and they left mini Stroop waffles for me every day. This hotel also serves breakfast daily, which we had in Natalie's room each morning. We walked to so many parts of Amsterdam, and as you can see, bikes were everywhere. One of the most iconic symbols of Amsterdam's design ethos is its world-renowned cycling infrastructure. With its extensive network of bike lanes, bike-friendly streets, and innovative cycling infrastructure, Amsterdam is a model for sustainable urban design. Cycling isn't just a mode of transportation in Amsterdam, it's a way of life that reflects the city's commitment to environmental stewardship and healthy living. We were told by the captain of our canal ride, which I will show you a little bit later in the video, that there were more bikes than people in the Netherlands. When we asked why, he explained many people had their work bike and their bar bike. I guess the bar bike is a little bit older and broken, which is what he explained, which kind of makes sense. Before I get into some of the design signage, I want to remind you that if you love the Design Around the World series, to subscribe to the channel so you can get more design and more travel. Next up, as I wandered through Amsterdam's charming neighborhoods, I encountered a vibrant tapestry of design experiences waiting to be explored. From bustling marketplaces to hidden alleyways adorned with street art, every corner of Amsterdam tells a story of creativity and innovation. There were many places using clean sans serif fonts like this Polarberry logo or this Stroop Waffle logo. Of course, there were fun script fonts as well like this Get Together logo inside a cafe. In many cafes, restaurants, and bars, the design work is consistent from outside to inside. Take, for example, this Cafe New where Art Nouveau extended into the light fixtures and the art. Art Nouveau is characterized by its use of flowing lines, organic forms inspired by nature, and decorative motifs such as floral and plant designs. It was popular in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, particularly in Europe. We also had dinner one night at Le Bahamal restaurant. The style here was eclectic, drawing inspiration from various design styles, including contemporary, industrial, and vintage. It creates a unique and inviting atmosphere for diners. The restaurant's interior features are a mix of modern and rustic elements, and you for sure want to check out the marbling and uh, colorful shiny wallpaper that is so beautiful in this restaurant. In addition to its industrial chic aesthetic, it incorporates pops of color and quirky decor accents throughout the space. From bold artwork and statement furniture pieces to whimsical decorative items, every detail adds to the restaurant's charm and personality. 
We also loved this boho style restaurant that we stopped in before we went to the Anne Frank Museum tour. The light fixtures and use of plants was dynamite in this place. The food was delightful as well. Boho is identified as being relaxed and comfortable, eclectic and artistic, and this cafe really did a good job of it. Speaking of the Anne Frank house, I wish I could have shown you more video of it, but no video is allowed for the museum. It is definitely a must see if you're visiting Amsterdam. Last but not least, we took a private canal cruise that served us lunch and taught us a lot more about the city. This was a stunning way to see a lot of the architecture of the city. The captain told us that Amsterdam was built on 1.5 million oak stilts and in some places they've put in concrete to secure the buildings. You'll notice some of the buildings tipping a bit. I love this canal cruise because I was able to catch some logos and see all the lovely intricate tops of the buildings. I'm so inspired by all the great silhouettes created by the tops of those, those buildings. While many buildings feature traditional gabled roofs, others boast flat or sloped roofs depending on the architecture style and period in which they were constructed. Some rooftops were sleek, modern lines of contemporary buildings while others were ornate rooftops for historical landmarks. In addition to their architectural diversity, Amsterdam's rooftops often served practical purposes as well. Many buildings in the city have rooftop terraces or gardens providing residents and visitors with panoramic views of the cityscape and surrounding landscape. These rooftop spaces offer a tranquil escape from the hustle and bustle of the streets below, allowing people to relax and unwind while enjoying breathtaking views of Amsterdam. You'll also notice that many of the buildings have hooks at the top. The hooks allow furniture and other large items to be hoisted up to go through the windows. Many of the stairs in these buildings are narrow and furniture will not fit. The beautiful architecture of this city prompted us to book photo shoots for our businesses. You may find some of the pictures we took on my website at karinagardner.com or designsweetcourses.com or even on my Instagram feed at karinagardner. It says a lot about the city that everyone was extremely nice to us as we took photos. People on the canal stopped to watch and wave, drivers paused if we were in the street for a moment, and when I asked AI why the people in Amsterdam were so nice, it said, the friendly and welcoming nature of the people in Amsterdam can be attributed to several factors, including cultural values, societal norms, and the city's diverse population. The friendliness of the people in Amsterdam is a reflection of the city's inclusive and progressive values, strong sense of community, relaxed lifestyle, and cultural diversity. And I think that about summed up why we loved Amsterdam so much. And if you were afraid you missed the tulips in this video, don't worry, they're getting their own video along with the Ricks Museum and some of the markets. If you love this, be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more design around the world. See you soon.